Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. We're talking business with Randy Thompson here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you, safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators, from the exotic to the everyday, trucks are everywhere, moving everything, never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are always pleased to welcome back to the program a particularly colorful person. Uh, Randy Thompson here. Uh, she is uh, the current uh, Nevada State Director for NFIB, which is the National Federation of Independent Business, but an expert on so many topics. Oh, <laughs> what is the saying? I, I, I don't know a lot about one thing, but I know a little about a lot of things. Hey, so, it's yeah. been my career. Yes. Yeah. So, well, first, happy Hanukkah. Just want to say that on well, tape. Thank so, you yeah. very much yeah. indeed, as we're taping this right after Thanksgiving. <laughs> I know. Uh, so I wanted to start out with you uh, because this was mentioned to me in private, but I, but you know a bit more about it, um, which is Netflix wants to come to Nevada and make some movies, but they are looking for a break. Yeah, so I'm not sure if it's Netflix or Amazon, but some big movie company wants to do something in Vegas, and in order for them to do it, they want uh, more film tax credits, which we passed back in, I don't know, 13 sessions, something like that. Uh, and then over the years, we've modified it, we've lowered it. Well, apparently we're gonna have a special session in December to uh, increase the film tax credit, so whoever can go film some stuff in Vegas. Um, and I have a feeling that I was gonna go oppose it, but why bother, because it'll pass. But I'm sure the progressives are gonna be there uh, in in huge numbers, because it's a corporate bailout thing. It's once it's it's capital cronyism. Um, and it's, it's, some states have used it, uh, like you were mentioning, I think Georgia uses a lot, mm -hmm. but um, it's, it, to me it's a boondoggle um, that doesn't really bring a lot to Nevada. Uh, and yet I know there's a lot of independent contractors, uh, well, several NFIB members are very active with the film industry down in Vegas, so it'll help some small businesses, but um, I don't know, I just, I guess we're luring another company in Nevada for a short time to uh, get some tax credits. Okay, so, you know, my, my vote would be that we get a break on our either Netflix or Amazon bill there you uh, go. for all Nevadans, <laughs> uh, you know, if they get that tax credit because, boy, that bill seems to be going up dramatically. It does, yeah. Uh, man, what do you think about all this streaming? I mean, I, I've never seen so many competing services, and they're not all going to survive. I mean, there's no way because, you know, people were cutting the cord because they were tired of cable and satellite. 
but they're paying way more now, not only for all these different streaming services, but then they all offer you, like if you want to watch the latest James Bond movie at home, it's 1995. Yeah, we were going to download the Dune, but it was 30 bucks. I'm like, okay, we'll wait till we go to the theater. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's, it's keeping people at home, which maybe that helps for COVID. I don't know. But um, there is a lot of competition out there for streaming services. And I think what you're getting now is adults are becoming TV addicts. It's like, oh, I, I gotta watch, I'm, I'm just, I gotta watch this series. And then, yeah, all I hear about is Yellowstone, Yellowstone, Yellowstone. So it's a very good show. I guess I, I, I haven't made it through the first one yet. I found it kind of boring, but <laughs> I'm sure. But it just, it, I, I see my husband, he, he's up at two in the morning streaming something because it's so interesting because there's so much content out there now. Well, let's face it, the world is online. Yeah. I mean, you know, when, when we first talked about the internet, and um, they were saying that they were going to um, scan every book that had ever been published and put it online. Well, literally, it's happened with everything now. Yeah. So whatever your choice is, you can enjoy it. The thing is, what's funny is that there were certain people that were very critical of watching a movie, for example, on your phone, mm -hmm. because they thought it didn't do justice to the movie. But people watch it from their phone, to going to see it at the biggest theaters, the IMAXs all around the country. So it's mm -hmm. it's actually working out quite well. Let's talk about business. Okay. So, you know, we, we have this interesting time because people are complaining about inflation, but they don't really understand all the, the pieces of this inflation. So first of all, and, and please feel free to correct me anyway, because I am no economist, <laughs> but first of all, you have pent up demand. So mm -hmm. people have not been able to do anything for a couple of years. Now they are just dying to do it. And they also have money because the government sent them all this money. And if they were able to keep their jobs, they were getting money and not spending it. So now they have money to spend. So now you have the toilet paper situation where everybody wants to buy everything, but you have way more ships coming in, way more packages that now Amazon needs to deliver. Oh, you just ordered it and it arrives 10 minutes later. Um, so our society is even more crazy than it was before. We can't wait two days. We have to get it in an hour. Um, and so this puts pressure on the entire system. Those that have the most money can get the services the quickest. Other people have to wait and prices keep going up. And you know, you have a situation where OPEC uh, wants to raise more money for their members. And so they raise the price of gasoline. We cut back on our gasoline, you know, and through the administration and through uh, the price of gas dropping. So that stopped all of the, uh, the gas production in this country, the fracking. So prices are going to go up. Mm -hmm. The question is, Randy Thompson, do they come down? They will eventually. Um, several economists are saying that um, inflation is not transitory. It is, it, it can become permanent. And when you've got a Fed that's injecting money into the system, like it's still doing, uh, our federal policy, the uh, central banks are still putting money into the system along with getting stimulus checks out. Now you've got the $300 um, child credit per month. Um, you've just got so much money going to people that that demand, it's, it, if, if we were in the normal society, like a year ago when we didn't have as much money and you had the same amount of, of product flowing out, great, but people are demanding more, so they have increased production. So, and, but yet the chain is clogged. Our, our supply chain is clogged. Um, why lower prices when people are willing to pay for it? Um, but what you've also got pushing it up is labor costs. Um, people are, if they're quitting a job, they're finding another job someplace else that pays them better, or they're working under the table uh, and keeping their old job. So inflation is, is not going anywhere, um, and not for a while. It will, I'm going to say 2023 is what I'm kind of hearing that, you know, give us, it's going to take a year before things kind of normalize. Well, the other part of it is that, you know, as everybody's been pushing for, well, not everybody, but a lot of people have been pushing for this $15 an hour minimum wage. Well, corporations don't pay for increases in costs. They can't absorb it, so they pass it on to the customer. Mm -hmm. That's the inflation. Yep. So then the person who's making $15 an hour has a purchasing power that is dropped because of the fact that they're making more money. You never catch up. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, and, and we've got to understand that there are always going to be entry-level positions and positions that you might just keep at for a long time. Uh, we, we go to a, a doctor and one of the nurses there quit and she's now bartending and she's making more money and has less stress being a bartender and a waitress than she does being a nurse. 
So we've got to look at how our society is putting pressure on employees to the point where they're breaking, and especially in healthcare. We are in trouble there. Um, but she's actually making more money as a bartender than she was making as a nurse. So people are going, wait a minute, even though I've got this degree, I can go off and do something else and make more money. But all that's doing is making things more expensive. Well, are you not feeling the same thing I am, which is whenever you go out and get a service from somebody, you are so nice to that person because you're so grateful they're actually doing the job so you can get the service you need. I stop by, whenever I see some FedEx guy unloading a box, I stop and say, thank you for working. <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I was, we took a, uh, we were driving up to Truckee a couple weeks ago and I'm waving at every truck driver, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so especially in the service industry, um, we over, I over tip every day now be, and whenever we go out because I just so appreciate that they're there. We were talking to a bartender at Red Robin and I said, how are things? She goes, people come up, people come and do one shift and then they just don't come back. They don't call, they don't show, they just, nothing. So people are like, I don't want to work this hard, forget it. Um, I have a problem with my LinkedIn profile because I keep getting job offers for Red Robin as a hostess. <laughs> I, think that, I think I need to fill out that uh, form a little bit better. Um, but it is kind of crazy. Um, but even you know, when you're talking about the, you know, increasing your tipping, that's inflationary as well. Mm -hmm. But I remember talking to our good friend Ty Cobb years ago about the debt as it was then, which is multiple trillions of dollars below what it is now. And I said to him, isn't inflation the way that we actually pay off the debt? And he said, yeah. Well, that's an interesting approach to it, I guess, yeah. Well, because the, yeah. man, the money becomes less valuable, mm -hmm. and so therefore it becomes easier to pay off. The thing that's scary was what Mark Amaday said on the program, Congressman Mark Amaday, um, was that all the money that we are borrowing now for these government programs, uh, we're gonna have to pay whatever the interest rate is. It's not at a set interest rate of near zero right. that it is right now, that if it goes up half a percent, one percent, whatever, can you imagine what that is on these trillions of dollars? And that's why a lot of us are opposed to the Build Back Better bill, these budget reconciliation bills, this money that Congress wants to fund, what trillions of dollars is it is, because they're gonna raise up interest rates eventually. The Fed's already talked about raising interest rates probably the end, middle next year. So you're gonna see interest rates going up, which means we're just gonna owe more. Well, the other thing too is that, you know, uh, the senior citizens have been, let's use the word screwed for a long time. Yeah. Because with interest rates near zero, you saved all your life for retirement and you didn't get into the risky stock market. And so you were looking for maybe a, a four or five percent return on your money. You've gotten zilch. Yep. You've been, you might as well have kept the money in your mattress yep. um, for what you were getting from a bank if you were getting anything. And so seniors, people who are savers, need interest rates to go up. Mm -hmm. But what is that going to do to our economy when they do? Not just for you know, the government, but for the average person. I mean, you remember, and I'm sure there are some people that are still getting a 12% interest mm -hmm. rate on their credit cards. Ugh, try and get one of those today. Yeah, I remember paying 12% 12 in 12, 12 interest on my home loan right. back in the 1991. So yeah, I mean, once those, if you start increasing interest rates, you're gonna increase mortgage rates and that makes a home even more, less affordable um, and for, for those that are trying to buy. So, you know, it's a trickle up and a trickle down effect. <laughs> um, and in growth states, as we are here in Nevada, where we're seeing um, now it's been kind of an interesting situation in Las Vegas by comparison with Northern Nevada. But Northern Nevada, Bob Lucy was taping a show with me earlier today, and he said that we've seen somewhere around 126,000 new residents in the last few years here in Northern Nevada. He's expecting that number to double um, in the next few years. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a 40% increase in population. I mean, where are we going to put those people? We were talking about. Uh, based on Mike Kazmierski of Edon saying that we need 5,000 new homes a year for the next 10 years. Well, that's nothing by what we really are going to need. Yeah, I think Brian Bonifant from UNR was saying they're expecting about 50,000 people to move here every year for the next, I don't know, 10 years, Fifth, you know, whatever it is. But it's, it's just, it's a continual growth pattern here. So, so that's double, double the population. <laughs> right. And you're, that's why we need that Wash of Lands Act so badly, oh. the, the bill. Well, we need, yeah. we need all these lands yeah. bills. We need the Clark County lands bill. Um, yep. You know, if we want to see <laughs> Ivanpah being added, be developed, uh, and other areas down in Southern Nevada, we need 
all the rural Nevada lands bills because there's, there's growth looking at us, staring us. Everything that Nevada ever dreamed of mm -hmm. is happening, yep. and, but we need those lands bills. Okay, let's take a break. More with Randy Thompson when we come back. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Ah! Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they were. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com. Tollsdevelopment.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Randy Thompson. She is the Nevada State Director for the National Federation of Independent Business. Um, so uh, this employee shortage, um, it's not getting any better. It is not. As I was explaining to you, we, us we have an ultrasound business and uh, where you come in and look at your baby, uh, prenatal imaging center, and we used to have four techs that would just, it was all part-time work. We now have, we're down to one tech um, because they're just, like I was telling you about the nurse that quit and became a bartender. Um, healthcare is really tough. It is, it is very difficult for that industry right now. People are afraid of, they're gonna get COVID, they're exhausted, they're working overtime. So you've got a lot of people quitting healthcare and going elsewhere, um, which is scary, but it's just, people are, are afraid, they're either afraid to work or they just don't really need to because the government's giving them so much money. Okay, so, so does it concern you that with the infrastructure bill, all this money is gonna come to Nevada for infrastructure construction, which is great for the industry. The problem is that you call an HVAC company or you call you know, a roofing company or whomever, they're all struggling to get employees right now. What are they gonna do if you get another couple of billion dollars coming in? Yeah, I think one of the best companies in, in the Reno area is Western Nevada Supply. Yes. And they are out there, they're actually advertising. And Christine Hogan, who works for Rick Revilio, says, Randy, we've never advertised because people just want to come work here. So when you have some of the they're, best they're companies. They're like the, one of the largest wholesalers of building supplies yes, in the state. Yes, we'll explain that. Yes, and, and if you want to see a great showroom, check out Western Nevada Supply Showroom. Especially their shower area. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's just gorgeous. But, I mean, when companies like that, Q&D Construction, Granite Construction, these are the guys that are going to benefit from the, from the infrastructure, but they've got to find people to work. So until the government realizes that you can't pay people to stay home and you can't tax those who are working, it's a very unfair system, you've got to encourage people to get back out there and working and, and make work fun again. So it's, and, but we've got to stop subsidizing all of these various mechanisms for okay, so social spending. So what subsidies are left here? The child care? Child care is a big one. Right. It is. We just got a stimulus check. My husband and I did. I don't know why, but they're still sending out stimulus checks. So they're still sending out money. They're, um, and then there's still, there's some, the um, unemployment for um, independent contractors, that's still available. So you've got people that really don't need to go back to work. We've extended how long you can collect unemployment. We've taken away at least 
you know, somewhat, we've taken away that incentive that you've got to be looking for a job, actively looking in order to get unemployment. So you've just got people that are able to stay home. If you, if you were able to sell your house that's doubled in price, and if you were able to, if you bought in stock, um, and that stock market's pretty much tripled, you can retire at 40, 50. <laughs> So we've got a great, we had a great economy uh, up till a year ago, and people are benefiting from that, and they're quitting the workforce. Okay, so, so then what is the answer? Now, obviously, you want to cut off the benefits, and they are going to get cut off Eventually. over time here. Mm -hmm. um, but at that point, you'll have lost a big chunk of the workforce to retirement, as you, you mentioned there, uh, but natural retirement as well. People mm -hmm. getting older can't do the job or whatever. I opened up the door to, you know, do we do something about immigration? Do we bring in workers? Because certainly the construction industry could use them. And there's lots of other industries that could use them. And the, the pushback I got was instantaneous. So no, we don't want to do that. Well, why not? How, do, how do you solve the problem? Yeah. I mean, be it the H-1B visas or H-1, the, the, the higher tech jobs that they bring in, uh, expanding that program because those are people that are taking jobs that, that Americans are competing for, but they don't always get them. Um, but guest worker programs, especially for construction industry, for landscaping, for the summer jobs, for seasonal workers, um, every industry is, is struggling right now and Americans don't necessarily want to work. So let's look at a workforce that pe people that are coming here for a better life, let's help them get a better life. Um, and I think the alternative is that otherwise we're going to see a greater move to robotics um, than we had anticipated. That it's not going to be 10 years, 15 years out, it's going to be two years out. Yeah. No. And we're already seeing that in, in the gaming industry. Oh, you're, I mean, Amazon, I was watching a blurb on Amazon today where there's a one person standing there, but there's robots taking the shelving everywhere. And they, Amazon said they just, just hired 45,000 people in the last week nationwide. So at least people are going back to work and they're being incentivized, but they're being paid a lot more than they expected to be. And thus, like we talked about inflation, the prices are going up. Yeah, and the $15 an hour minimum wage is kind of amusing at this point. Well, you know, I've argued against that all the time because I say let the marketplace dictate what people should be paid. And the marketplace is right now at about $17 an hour. So forget minimum wage. Yeah, good luck on that too, by the way. Yeah. All right, let's take another break. We'll be right back with Randy Thompson after this. 7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and Twitter. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Events Center in Las Vegas. Host meetings and events on two floors. Stay in luxurious rooms and suites. Unlimited branding opportunities. Regional Italian cuisine by Chef Mark Segrisi. Flexible event spaces. Full buyout options. Visit ahernhotel.com today. I'm Jeff Gehrman, an investigative reporter with the Las Vegas Review Journal. I'm your guide for season two of Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas. You're in with every gangster and hoodlum in the United States. I don't go for that, Mr. Kennedy. I don't go for that kind of action. I was on television accused of fronting for the mob. Subscribe to Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas, Season 2, today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they were. Seven at Seven is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and YouTube. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Randy Thompson. She is the Nevada State Director for the National Federation of Independent Business. So you're a big fan of Shop Locally. I am. 
I, I like the idea of shopping locally, but I don't dislike the idea of shopping at Walmart or any of the other big corporations because they hire lots and lots of people. Well, yeah, shop locally means don't go online from Amazon and get things that you could be buying at the Freckled Frog at the Summit Mall. I mean, that's my, what I'm thinking. But when you, when you shop locally, 67 cents of every dollar stays in your community. Um, Walmart is very generous with donations back to the community, so I'm not dissing Walmart or you know CVS or anything like that. But what makes us unique is our locally owned and operated stores. What makes us Reno different from Carson or different from Tennessee is the restaurants that we have here and and the breweries. You know, you've got Huntsman Brewing that just moved into Silver Peak. You've got Chewy's now at, at um, Ranch Hera. Though that's what makes a community unique is our locally owned and operated businesses. Okay, so you mentioned Huntsman, so I want to bring up your dad, who oh. passed recently, who is a pillar of this community, Thanks. and uh, and Huntsman is doing a special thing for him. Yeah, so Huntsman Brewing is rolling out a snowshoe pine white IPA in honor of my dad, um, Don Snowshoe Thompson. Dad converted the restaurant. Um, the, it was a ranch house built in 1897, and it's actually the, law, the uh, oldest structure in Nevada that's still on its original foundation that is operating as a home or something, but it was 18, 1897. My dad converted that place to a restaurant in 1976. Uh, it became Holcomb House, Bailiwick, Snowshoes Tavern, Silver Peak, and now the Huntsman Brewing. And so they're rolling out a beer in honor of the man that really made this place a, a restaurant for well over 40 years now. It's really cool. I'm very appreciative. People should go buy and get a beer. Go, go to Huntsman, get a snowshoe, white pine, you know, pine white IPA. <laughs> Randy Thompson, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Always great to see you. Thank you, Sam. Happy Thank Hanukkah. You. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll be right back. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Mendham with Joey Whitaker. One of the things I love about the Carson Valley Inn here in beautiful downtown Mendham is CV steak. I have eaten here so many times. Tell folks what they can expect when they come here to eat. It's a beautiful room, great service. We have certified Angus beef, seafood, lamb, a great range of appetizers, and wonderful desserts. Jean-Michel's done a great job of selecting some beautiful wines for us. The customers love it, and we've got a great selection of cocktails as well. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. At Design Outdoor, we specialize in all hardscapes, pavers, and walls you'll need for everything, from wonderful small yards to full-blown outdoor living. And we only refer the best contractors to make your vision a reality. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I'm men's rights attorney, Marilyn York. And because I represent men in all family law matters, women often call me gender traitor, woman hater, and even disgusting. So why represent men and target myself with these offensive monikers? It's simple. Children with fathers in their lives are six times less likely to drop out of school, 15 times less likely to go to prison, and five times less likely to commit suicide. So ladies, you can hate me, but please love your children more than you hate their fathers. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. You can do that now these days. We'll see you on the next broadcast.